I feel like I'm ringing the bell for class or something. <laughs> If you're not familiar with how to use your singing bowl, say you got one on a whim or someone gave you one or you just happen to have one in your family, you just want to get familiar with it. This is the wand though. So this is where the energy is coming from you to it, from it to you, so to speak, outside of its vibrational vortex. So you want to get acquainted with the wand. You want to get a relationship with it. Um, work with it and by itself hold it find out how it feels good to hold I mean I have a wand I don't like holding with a different one you know so different things okay and you can just tap to get a feel for your sound bowl you don't try to go round and round and round and round some of the best most effective healing I get is that and I'll put it wherever I need it like I've been having a lot of lymphatic things going on since I quit the coffee. So I have natural stimulation, natural energy, natural everything. This, I can literally feel vibrationally in my jowl, in my neck, in my breasts when I'm having pain with my uh, PMS, hips, pain, and then I will dance with it, you know, and really have fun with it. So have fun with your singing bowls though. But I just wanted to use that this morning. Can everybody hear me okay? Yay, Danielle. And you can also put different things in the middle of your singing bowl. So I have this Herkimer diamond. It'll sound different. And I can charge the Herkimer. You, But make sure it's not something that rolls around because then you're just going to hear that. So anyhow, that's that. And we're going to do a couple things to start just to prepare this because this is going to be a few days long. I'm going to be doing it until Sunday. So I'll probably pop on after we do the whole ritual to do card readings for people today. Separate from the other list. The other list we're going to do again Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So what I have to start is the Rose of Jericho. So I'm excited for that. And this is a resurrection fern. So I think it's great that we're going to get to see this grow over the next few days, however long it takes, as we revive our ancestors, angels, and guides to help us, you know, guide us through the darker phases, being fall and winter, okay? Okay. So you can use this water, though, once you make it. I have the water down there. I'm going to pour the water in this basin and then put the rose back in it. You can place um, coins, crystals, jewelry, different things in it that are not going to melt in the water, you know, that are safe in the water. You can do that. You can use the water for anointing, different things like that. And you can um, create a ritual, write out your intention and place the paper on top, it'll rest, it'll nestle on top of the fern in the water. Meditate with the plant. You can use the water to cleanse and protect, much like the ritual we talked about already. And then you can toss the water around your home, like the ritual we had talked about already. So I'm excited. And it's going to, in the home, protect and invite energies of abundance, protection, and prosperity, which is what we're doing. So I thought, perfect time to do this ritual. So that's what we're going to do first. Then we're going to get into the second ritual, which is the booster. So that's going to boost everything. You should actually do that in the morning. We're going to talk all about that in a moment. And I'll be doing that tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, and Sunday morning outside at my other altar okay so i'm just gonna get this fern going i have this cute little basin um that i trash picked of course and it's floating on top it looks so cute i'll show you guys So there it is, day one. I'm excited to see how it looks when she's blooming. I've seen them on other people's altars. They look pretty neat. They spiral out. So this is the altar. I'll go now and tell you why I have what I have and wait till anybody else shows up. 
one more sound bowl clearing and then we'll do the power boost and get into the second ritual and we'll be done. It's not going to take too long today. I'll come back on and do a half hour or so of readings. Hey, Josh. Hey, honey. We have just now started the resurrection fern, the Rose of Jericho. We're going to revive the energy in our homes. Look at these little freaking roots. They are already going. They look so fucking happy. They're so cute. They're spreading out already. I absolutely love it. Okay, so I'm super excited. So what I have on my altar, I have eucalyptus to purge any bad energies, any darker energies, cleansing and clearing eucalyptus, also for the throat chakra. So it's representing a bit of air. I have my grandmother's ashes. Of course, she's one of my biggest ancestors, angels, and guides. I have a piece of petrified wood representing the roots to the earth to my ancestors, angels, and guides back to the, you know, earliest of time. A little owl incense that I got from my sister. So you're going to do extensions of your home too, to your family, your ancestors, angels, and guides. This I took from her house. She gave it to me, but I used to just be a taker as a little cancer, sun and rising growing up. I just, if I liked it, I took it if it was small. I'm such a little pack rat. Not anymore though. She gave it to me. This little thing that I got at the dollar store, home is where, um, our story begins. So it starts at home. It starts with you. That's the blue candle for the next phase of this. This is the myrrh. That's part of that ritual. So the myrrh in that ritual, you could use resin. You can use actual essential oil, which I did use here in the spray. I didn't, myrrh is very sticky, very sappy. Let me tell you, you don't want to be playing with the oil by itself. So you put the oil on the cloth. We have the cloth in there. Anybody that donates is going to go in here on the cloth and the papers that I will burn on Sunday night. So you basically have until Sunday night to donate if you want to be a part of the more in-depth <clears throat> singing bowl. And then I have some essential oil rollers here that I absolutely love. I used to get them once a month from this company. I don't know why it won't show it. Okay. This one I use like every day, spirit guide. I use that before, during, and after all of your readings. This one is called merge. It's going to merge the light and the dark. It's going to merge here between the veil and there. So all of these oils I'll be incorporating throughout the weekend into the different, you know, when I sit here and meditate every morning and every night, twice a day, mid afternoon. This one is Muse. That's more for me, more for protecting to my PayPal. The button is in the link tree or I will add it. If not, I've loaded it to Benford's All Naturals as well throughout the story, but it's just my name, Benford's All Naturals at yahoo.com or PayPal me like slash Benford's. This one is Magical Spirit Oil as well. And this one is luminous, so I think this one would be great for illuminating with our ancestors, angels, and guides. I couldn't fit, actually, the lantern up here, so the lantern's outside at the other altar. This is Horn of Plenty. Oh, my God, when I use this, I really get so many sales, so many inquiries, like... This one I really love. So I'm going to be using all of these and then the prosperity. I like to support other people, other small shops. This was, and I really liked their oils. I really, really do. Um, so then I just have my, I always have a starter candle. When I'm doing rituals, I like to not have to use a lighter. So, I mean, and matches are nice, but they're not always practical here because of the moisture. But um, I always have a starter candle. So that'll be the candle that I use to light like a wick to light that and so on and so forth. You guys just want to have respect and reverence. That's all really. And then there's the rest for everything else. Okay. So you can do your altars however you like. Love you, Liz, baby. If anything, I want y'all to see, I gotta sit in a different fucking chair. This little Indian stool thing is not fit in my ass cheeks. They're cute for decoration, but not fucking. Hey, Skin Diva. So, we're gonna do one more sound clearing and then I'm gonna get to it. <clears throat> the Rose of Cherico is going. I'm absolutely loving it. I feel like I look really crooked. Oh well. So 
Again, this is one of the easiest ways I've been using it. Set an intention. We're going to set the intention to boost heart, mind, body, and soul with our ancestors, angels, and guides. And we're also going to do the yin-yang effect, light and dark. I like to have a counterbalance to all my intentions. So in order to boost, we must cleanse and clear. So in order to spread our wings and fly, we've got to let go of some people, places, and things, some unwanted energy in our home. And then your home is where your heart is. It's not necessarily your home. However, when you do this spell, if you do it at home, you want to do it in a central location in your home, be it the kitchen, the dining room, wherever you have some stale energy. If it's the bedroom, you and your relationship with your partner, whatever you got to do. But the great thing about the sound bowl is I will be able to be set you know, set this intention and walk throughout my home and sound clear the rest of my home and also spray and smudge the rest of my home with the different things I've been, I've set the intention with. That's what this altar is all about. Cleansing and clearing the home to boost it for the fall and for the winter so we can invite people into our home that, you know, feel, you know, when you walk into those homes and you're like, this feels really good here. Like, I really like it here. That's how you want to feel, you guys. That's why those rituals I talked about all week long in the, um weekly update that's already up. I did it on Tuesday, but it's posted to the link tree. It's posted to YouTube. That's why these rituals help. They help you spruce up the energy in your home and in your heart and in your mind and in your soul, your aura. Okay. So the intention has been made clearly. <laughs> you guys want to be clear too about your intentions. So the first spell that we're going to do is, I think, the first or second one in the video. So you can watch the video to see the whole thing. I basically have the shortest version for my, you know, ease here. <clears throat> this is a blue candle that you'll need. If you don't have a blue candle, white and black will work. I don't care if it's a candle from freaking, you know, the... Bath and Body Works, whatever you got on hand. I decided to use this organic muslin that was dyed naturally with organic plant matter. And I had done some shibori technique that I went to a class to learn how to do. So this is one of my sacred altar cloths. And I had done the circles for a reason, four corners, um, the seven chakras and spirit and source energy. But anyhow, enough about that. This is the cloth that I'll be working with all week. I chose red out of the cloths that I have because red is going to be that grounding element, that rooting chakra that we need for our ancestors, angels, and guides to come through. Because if you think about the chakras in a circle, it goes back to spirit and source energy with the crown, but that's always going to be connected so long as you're rooted. You have to be rooted, plugged into that. It's not enough to just have these thoughts, these visions. you got to be grounded with them, okay? So you need a cloth, the blue candle, and myrrh, or as I said, you can go to a tree in your yard or in your woods and get some of the resin and cook it down and make a little spray or oil yourself. Make sure it's not something poisonous, like we don't want fucking, you know, poison sumac or whatever. But I made this myrrh here. So everything has been charged. Everything's ready to go. Myrrh is, you know, used in the Bible, used, gave they gave it to baby Jesus, but it gives your spirit a met metaphysical lift. It's also great for the skin, hair, and nails. It's fighting free radicals, bacteria, different things like that. So it's going to fight darker energies, and it's going to boost your ability here, okay? If you've been feeling down, out of sorts, off, you know, not centered, definitely you want to work with myrrh, okay? This spell, this ritual is best to be done several days, even for 30 days in a row at sunrise. That's your best time to harness all of the energy. There's different times, different ways you should be facing different things like this. So definitely facing the east towards the rising sun. Now I'll be doing it tomorrow through Sunday that way outside on the balcony. Okay. So 
what we're going to do is everybody is going to close their eyes and they're going to think about what's weighing them down, what's holding you back, what's keeping your family from thriving, what's keeping the relationships from growing, what's, you know, where's that funky energy coming from? Let's shed that now. Let's cleanse and clear it now. So what you want to do is take a moment to actually close your eyes and think about what's weighing you down. And that is when I will start to light the candle. So I'll go ahead and close my eyes for a moment. And when I light the candle, I'll wait until a couple of you say, whatever, I'm ready, I'm back, or whatever. So take however long you need, though, if you want to go and watch the replay. You can always pause this and really maybe write it down. Write down on a sheet of paper what you want to get rid of. And be particular. Say, I want to get rid of that bad habit where I leave this, that, or the other laying around. I want to stop, you know, yelling at them for doing this, that, or the other. We're getting rid of bad energy in our homes and in our relationships with our family, friends, and lovers. So that our ancestors, angels, and guides, and all of our friends and family feel welcome in our home, okay? So take a moment, close your eyes, and you'll know what you need to release in your home. What habits, what, what passive-aggressive behavior, you guys, so much, okay? Okay, Anna. So I'm going to take a moment. I am so meditative. I could sit forever and release a lot of shit. Let's be honest. I even might make a list um, because I felt like when I was doing that, closing my eyes, I said, no, I really should write this down and burn it when I'm done. So on Sunday, I'm actually going to burn the list that I was mentally going over. And don't limit it to unwanted things and limit, you know, behavior, interactions, you know, the limits that you put on what your health, wealth, and abundance can provide you in your home. Like, I want to be able to make this place more comfortable and more lived in. It kind of looks like Mo and I are two college kids with hand-me-down everything. Like, I'm starting, you know, so there's a lot of things that you could consider, okay? Um, I definitely suggest making a list, though. And on Sunday, I will go live doing one more service like this where we can actually engage and see if anything's already started to happen. The ease and the tension and the protection and the love start to surface. Okay. So once you have made your list mentally or, or literally, go ahead and light your candle. Yeah, when I'm meditating, I literally just want to be releasing. So what I'll do is make my list, then get into the meditative state, then burn it in my little cauldron outside. So any of you that donate, you can tell me privately in your donation what you want on your list, and I will add it to the list that I burn in the cauldron. Don't Too big, too small, no big deal, because you're going to get a three-card pool reading from these decks here. It's really simple, really cute. A seed planted on your behalf in my yard or in my little balcony. Let me tell you, they grow because it's insane little things I've been able to grow back there. <laughs> and I'm not even trying to. Like, I just realized I have an avocado growing. We have several dates growing. I think we might even have a fucking olive tree growing because Mo puts his little seeds out there too now. I have a sunflower growing, just all of, and grass, all this other little stuff in the bird seed. 
So anyways, light your candle and do this maybe again with me on Sunday, this power boost, because we will have then resurrected what needed to come out, what needed to get cleansed and cleared, and then on Sunday be able to fully release it, okay? So knowing your heart, though, that it's time to let go and move on. And now I'm actually going to get the cloth prepared so that the cloth can be marinating basically like all weekend long. Um, you just want to take the oil and uh, if you're going to use oil, anoint your hands and self and cloth. I'm actually just going to use a spray because I figured I didn't want to be all sticky. I'm just going to spray myself. And the cloth pretty heavily. Oh, I like that smell. I like myrrh. Myrrh is kind of like patchouli acquired. Like, I don't like patchouli, but I love myrrh. It's like musty, sort of sexy, clean, but ancient smelling. Like, I love it. Oh, lots of smoke coming off this one, too, you guys. And it's in like a circle. It's neat. Okay. So those that are donating will also be, you know, added to the box with the cloth. I basically have bay leaves for all of you in there. Okay. So when you do this ritual, you're going to write out your list. I think we've all decided that's best. And when you go to light your candle, this is what you say. <clears throat> or after you've lit your candle or before you light your candle, there are no real rules here. You're going to write this out and have it on a piece of paper, though, so you know it or memorize it. And this is why you want to do it in the morning. Like the sun above me, my spirit rises. My spirit lifts. My spirit soars. May the light of the sun bring me joy today. Okay? What does what mean? What does what mean? Like the sun above me, my spirit rises, my spirit lifts, my spirit soars. May the light of the sun bring me joy today. Again, you want to do this one for several days in a row. It smells so fucking good here. About the smoke. Oh, different things. So now it's burning in a steady stream, but it also has a lot to do with, you know, movement and everything around it, obviously. Yeah. But I just like to watch it. Sometimes it's not smoking. It's really just clean. It all depends. There's like books and stuff. I started reading about the smoke and reading candles like that. I'm not, I'm just learning that myself right now. So. There we are. I will have that written in the description when I load this to IGTV and YouTube, the, the incantation part. So now we're moving on to the prosperity spell. So we're, we're doing the uplifting, cleansing and clearing, working with our ancestors, angels and guides to boost the overall prosperity and protection in your home. Okay. Again, I have the essential oils down there that I'll be working with throughout the week. So if you want to do this yourself, you know, you want to get into a meditative state with whatever oils and incense and candles and stuff you like in addition to what they've asked for. So a green candle, but again, black, white, whatever the fuck you got. I don't really care. You could even dress the candle with things from your yard, like different evergreens and pieces like that. If you don't happen to have a green candle, get some greens from your yard. Be careful. Remember pyrotechnics. We're not, I'm not responsible for houses burning down. That's not my gig. Okay. So August 18th is the best day to do this ritual. You guys. So I'll be doing it every day and especially August 18th on Saturday, I guess that is. So that's when you, you have time. Okay. Don't worry. Now the green candle is here. This is to honor the consus, the God of the harvest, but not just harvest storage. So this is a protection of health, wealth, and abundance to ensure that you have enough to get you through fall and winter. This is to ensure you have enough heart, mind, body, and soul, healthy relationships, 
food, sustenance, money, you know, energy, everything. We're, we're, we're going to ensure that we have that now. That's why you want to pay your respects and have reverence now for these gods and goddesses if you so choose to work with them. But if you're not working with the gods and goddesses, that's fine. You're working with the elements. You're working with earth, wind, fire. Right now we're working with the harvest, earth. So leave Kansus out of it if you're not into that whole, you know, paying homage to certain people's deities and that's fine too because some people find that to be appropriation and i understand that so i just try to strictly work with the elements myself but when i read a piece of literature that talks about them i'm going to reference it because it's not my piece of work i'm just referencing the book that i have displayed here um so anyways august 18th you want to do this that's saturday um you're going to be honoring the harvest and the ability to store Notice how we're able to store fruits and nuts. We're able to dry them and have them in these darker months. Notice that some of these root vegetables last three and six months long after the harvest. Apples and apples and um, freaking, the, the, what are they called? Carrots and potatoes and things like that. All those root vegetables. All of this stuff is amazing sustenance that is full of nutrition that is going to get you through these darker phases. We have to pay respect and homage and, and have reverence and give our offerings to these harvests in order to keep sustaining them mentally, physically, and emotionally. Okay? So... Um, in addition to showing respect and reverence for all that we have and, you know, all that we will have this fall and winter, this is going to bless and protect your home. This is going to bless and protect your ancestors, angels, and guides, basically thanking them for everything that they provide for you seasonally, annually, day in, day out, year in, year out, you guys, okay? So, you want to... Work with the candle initially. So I'm going to get the candle lit and then we're going to talk about what's next. So I'm lighting the candle. You want to light your candle and say, spirits of my household, I ask you to watch over us. Keep all who enter and live here prosperous and well. I offer this. My offering today is dried dates. And I have the fig. So you don't actually eat it. You offer it. And tonight I'll go ahead and eat it and enjoy it with Mo. So watch your book. Don't fall. Let me just Okay, so, and that's the thing. I just want to give respect to the author of the Daily Spell Book for the Good Witch. I lost a follower today. He had to tell everybody that he was leaving the page because of my witchy woo-woo and fake nails. <laughs> so, that's what we're up against, you guys. We're awful witchy woo-woo people, but we know in our hearts otherwise. So, Light your candle and say, spirits of my household, I ask you to watch over us. Keep all who enter and live here prosperous and well. I offer this, whatever you're going to offer. It suggests you bake bread or bake something from your home, from your heart. Well, I had picked these figs from our friend's yard, um, which I thought was a beautiful offering because he's like a relative of Moe's. So that's an extension of friends and family, you guys. And the dates, which come from Moe's culture, and they're just super nutritious, super good for you. It's one of the best things I felt I could offer my ancestors, angels, and guides. The seeds I will then use to plant. So I offer this. And I have my offering there on the table. Leave it there. And you can leave it all week long if you're leaving dried fruits and nuts and stuff. And then have a little harvest on Sunday. So I'll be eating them at night regularly because I'm going to do this a couple times a day. So um, I offer this gift from my heart as a token of my gratitude. Consider then your many blessings and the new ones you'd like to receive. So then again, you'd sit in ceremony, sit in meditation, and maybe write down what you are grateful for. That attitude of gratitude is really 
what will get you through these darker months. Um, you know, the, the, the fall is called fall, autumn, whatever, for a reason. I mean, everybody's shedding, everybody's spiraling, you know, and not to mention we're having to go around our family, friends, and lovers that trigger us so much. So why not protect your home, protect yourself now, okay? So I absolutely love you guys. That's everything for today. And like I said, I'll go on again Sunday and do it once more with everybody. I'm going to go live now, though. Um, I'm going to sign off and then go live because I want to just save this, keep it short and sweet for me to load to IGTV and YouTube for all of you guys to watch in the replay, okay? So I absolutely love you guys. Do you have any questions before we sign off? In particular, about this. If it's a question about another spell or spells in general, maybe save it for a direct message. But if it's about this, I would totally, I can answer anything now. And then we'll go on for about an hour live. I'll do some readings about your home. Just affirmations, quick ones. It's not going to be anything crazy long. Matter of fact, no, I won't be going live after this. I actually have some stuff to do now that I think about it. Because I pushed this to 1 o'clock, and I was supposed to do this at 12 o'clock. I just promised Mel I would get some stuff hauled out of here, hoed out of here. That's the thing. I'm cleansing and clearing. I'm trying to make my relationship with Mo better, holding up my end of the bargain, his end of the bargain. You know, it's, it's not a one-way street, your relationships in your home, everything with your kids. Everything can be done Saturday. Yes, and this could be done monthly, seasonally, whatever. But on Saturday, the 18th is the day that we celebrate Consus, um, the god of harvest and plenty and of storage. So Mo's culture, actually, their home is part storage. In the adobe-like structures that they built in North Africa were, were, were built in like, you know how you have your built-in storage cubbies for your bookshelves and stuff in your home? Well, they had that for the dates, for the olives, for the figs, for the palm, for everything that they ate. Because they had winters, but then they also had devastating summers. And, you know, it, it and they've also been through a myriad of climates and stuff as the Serengeti moved and everything, you know, and all the desert became to be. But they, this, this this ability to store these foods and have them sustain like honey, you know, doesn't go bad ever, you know, thousands and thousands of years old, olive oil and olives, like never go bad raisins. And think all of this food is a miraculously going to heal you and be sustainable throughout the year. It's crazy. And we need to have that much more respect for it and reverence for it. So many of us just have no fucking clue. To give thanks initially, but also to protect that harvest because there have been years where there are droughts. There have been years where there is very little to collect and we have to be grateful and have gratitude for what we were able to collect and ration it appropriately. So this in effort is to say thank you now for the blessings we know we will receive later. And that's how you should be manifesting your hopes and dreams. Have gratitude now for what it is you want. Almost pretend you already have it. You know, it, it just it, just how will it make you feel? What will you do with it? Where will you go with it? Why do you need it? When did you, you know, decide you wanted it? What's it going to help you do? You know, and, and that's why spirit will give it to you. Have that attitude of gratitude for it now. And by offering them your ancestors, angels, and guides, the fruit, the bread, whatever, you're inviting them into your home. You're saying, thank you, I need you, I appreciate you, I love you, I have gratitude, I have reverence, I have respect for you. This, this is an offering from me to you, but I know it comes from you. I know it comes from source energy, and I respect you at my core, at my source. Okay? Any other questions? Because it's not going to show your questions in the live, but I will answer them to the best of my ability now and remember you guys spell casting has very 
little to do with precision. It has more to do with, you know, feeling and emotion. We're emoting. We're pushing out of us. We're expelling out of us. We're emitting out of us the energy, the frequency. It has a lot more to do with, you know, the vibrational tone you have initially. So I always say no rules. Get what you can get. I mean, as far as the ingredients go, the necessities go, and wing it the best way you can. I mean, you're not calling on demons here. We're not. That I think that's what some people think witchcraft is, really, when it's just a whole lot of respect, a whole lot of reverence, and a whole lot of, you know, love for, for this earth. I don't understand why people think it's crazy. Especially religious people. They go to the altar every day at the Catholic Church and light these freaking candles. Like, I don't understand what's any different. But, um, what are you going to do, you know? I'm not raping little kids, though, okay? So, just so you know. Just, just so you know. Um, <laughs> look at Pennsylvania. I'm so, okay, this is turned into, like, a different thing. So, I'm going to go, I'm going to get busy. And I may or may not, like, once I'm done getting busy, I can probably go online and finish yesterday's list and then we'll save it for like Sunday when I do the list um of the three card readings for the household because then you guys will have your list done hopefully your list of cleansing and clearing and then your list of gratitude see how I always like to have a, a dark and a light a yin and a yang a, an in and an out I like to have it you know cohesive like that with with all my little prayers and I've been doing these for like five years now so for when a follower says to me I'm not following you anymore because you're a witch and you have fake nails. Well, you must not really follow me very closely because I've had fake nails for over a year now, basically. And I dye my hair. My eyebrows are fake. And I've been doing witchcraft since day one on Bimfus All Naturals. Like, dude, you must not follow me. Like, you just are a number. Like, are you kidding me? People are ridiculous. So that blew my mind today. I just didn't get that. But anyhow, what are you going to do? You can't get everybody. You're not for everybody. And that's just fucking okay. So I'm excited. I love you guys. I'm going to leave this up a little longer. Tonight I'll go and enjoy the offering with my ancestors, angels, and guides. And your ancestors, angels, and guides. And all of those that have PayPal and stuff. I'm excited to do that. Okay? So I will be doing this tomorrow. Saturday and then Sunday again live on the last day. I'll probably do it five o'clock Pacific Standard. So that's like eight o'clock Eastern and that gets like everybody hopefully a chance to pop on. Right? I think that's the best time. And I hope you guys do it. I encourage y'all to do it. Um, I really do. Okay. I love you guys. I'm going to go. I just want to get, oh, see it stopped smoking. See how it's like, it's simmered down now. Like, I think we were making a connection. I want to look more into the um, candle, you know, reading and stuff. Because I read wax a lot, but I don't read smoke a lot. So I'm excited to do that. Okay. Behave, you guys. I love you.